Social Annotations, Collaborative Online Reading, a presentation for the K-12 Online Conference 2015. Thank you for spending the next 20 minutes with me to consider some of the possibilities of using online annotation with students and with each other. I'm Paul Allison and I teach 6th and 7th graders at New Direction Secondary School in the Bronx. I'm also the tech liaison for the New York City Writing Project and since 2003 I've been working with other teachers to build youthvoices.net. In addition, since 2006 I've been one of the co-hosts of a weekly webcast Teachers Teaching Teachers from which much of the video in this presentation originated. For a few years, teachers in the New York City Writing Project and teachers whose students post and comment on Youth Voices have been using online annotation to move students toward critical, careful reading. And we have learned how public online annotation can add collaborative reading to the mix. Recently, we've been taking a closer look at three text commenting tools, Hypothesis, Now Comment, and Lit Genius and Beta Genius. We invite you to join us in this inquiry. We are proposing that we ask about the affordances of each of these tools and work with other teachers, with our students, and with different types of texts. Over three Wednesdays in September, we gathered on Teachers Teaching Teachers to talk with Jeremy Dean, the Director of Education at Hypothesis, Dan Durenberg, founder of Fairness.com and publisher of Now Comment, and Stephen Pringle, who works with the Genius Beta community. We were also joined by teachers from all grade levels who use each of these tools for online annotation with their students. But let's begin here in this presentation by having each of these men introduce themselves and the tools they are working to build. First, here's Jeremy Dean. Uh, my name is Jeremy Dean. I'm a former English teacher. I have a PhD in English Literature, so I also taught at the college level and the high school level. I'm the former education czar of, uh, of uh, Rap Genius Genius, so I, I spent two and a half years founding and, and heading their education outreach uh, arm, um, so I can speak to, to their service and uh, to the politics of that platform as well. Um, and now I'm at Hypothesis, uh, which a lot of you guys know, but I'll just state real quickly, is a nonprofit open source uh, web annotation application, uh, form foremost as a, as a browser extension, but there's some other ways to access uh, online documents and PDFs and HTML and PDF format. And uh, so now I'm doing the same thing I did at Genius, trying to get educators and support educators using uh, this annotation technology, and it's a pretty great gig, honestly. <laughs> I really enjoy these conversations, and I enjoy the work, so. Next, we have Dan Dorenberg. Dan Dorenberg, uh, one of the things I love about now, now comment is you. Um, <laughs> I could say that. Yeah, seriously. I'm, I'm, I'm it turning it, red. <laughs> I'm good. No, but it, it makes a big difference that there's somebody, there's a person there, you know, um, who's who answers questions, who says, you want to embed that on your voices and you don't like our embed the code, let me work with my designer and we'll, we'll figure that out, which is something you do. So, um, just to say, uh, as by way of introduction, I, I think of it as almost like marginalia, where, but it's not marginalia exactly. But you know, you're seeing the document, you've got all the context, and you're you're making comments in like another pane, but where the document's visible, and it, it's just a, a whole different process from a traditional message board where say you read something somewhere whether it's a paper document or a screen and then you go somewhere else to make your comments and then you have to say I'm talking about paragraph three or you know whatever it, just that that integration of the document with the comment in in one visual space is is really that's what's dramatically different from a traditional discussion board and finally we have Stephen Pringle I'm Stephen Pringle. Uh, I work with Genius. Uh, originally, my, my calling with Genius was to work on the lit side of things, which meant I crossed over quite a lot into the educational arena. Uh, we, I work quite a lot on Shakespeare, on, on other like important public domain literature, which is read widely uh, around the, in English-speaking countries and around the world. Uh, right now, uh, my, my focus and my kind of my target is is genius beta and um, getting people using D 
the off-site products. With these three introductions in mind, and the communities of developers, advocates, organizers, readers and annotators, teachers and students that each of them represents, let's take a look at an example from each tool. The best way for you to get a sense of how Hypothesis, Now Comment, and Lit Genius work is to pause the video and go to the example that I'm showing you to add your own annotations. These documents are all open and available for your collaboration. Let's go in the same order as the introductions, starting with Hypothesis. In September, a group of educators annotated Tanahishi Coates' Atlantic Monthly article, Letter to My Son. You can join these conversations at this shortened address, goo.gl forward slash capital F, small n, small m, capital L, capital E, capital J. The first thing to notice are the three boxes in the upper right hand corner of the page. I'm already logged in, ready to annotate the text or reply to one of our colleagues. In the bottom right corner, you can see there are 70 comments as of this recording. Maybe you will be 71. Notice how when I click on a comment, the text that is being referenced gets highlighted in blue. Also notice that comments can include links and images. As we've been looking at these tools, we've been interested in how accessible the conversations are and whether or not the conversations grow around comments. In this article, you can see several places where replies were added, suggesting possible places for further discussion. There's so much more that we could look at together here. Allow this to be your invitation to join us in annotating this article as your introduction to the possibilities of a hypothesis in your classroom. Next, let's take a look at the conversations that a group of educators are having around a now comment version of an article by James A. Bean, Curriculum Integration and the Disciplines of Knowledge. You can find this document at https nowcomment.com slash documents slash 35744. But you can also find this public open document by logging into now comment and searching for curriculum integration. Once there, you'll see that a lot of information is visually and easily available to you. If you are in the two pane mode, the text is in the left pane, divided up into paragraphs. On the right side are threaded comments and replies. Again, by clicking on the comment on the right, you will be taken to the place in the text that is being referenced. One special feature of Now Comment is the way comments are invited with two boxes. According to Dan Dornberg, they didn't have double entry or dialectical notes in mind when they developed this, but I use it that way with my students. When they are commenting on a text or replying to another student's comment, I ask them to first paraphrase what the writer or the other reader said before writing a more expanded response themselves. If your students are familiar with dialectical note taking, this feature will fit their purpose well. And I suspect that this and other more technical features on Now Comment are why this tool seems to invite the most extended threaded conversations around specific parts of a text. Again, so much to look at here and so little time, please join us in this conversation as well as a way to see what is possible with Now Comment. For now, while we're here, take a look at the way a reader can use the Sorted tab to see everything that a particular reader had to say about this text. I hope it's becoming clearer through these examples how the reading experience can become a more collaborative social experience with tools like Now Comment. There are so many possibilities and affordances that I am only able to suggest here. And it gets even worse with Genius, Lit Genius, and Genius Beta. 
just a reminder, mostly to myself, my purpose here is to invite you into this ongoing inquiry. With that in mind, allow me to introduce Lit Genius with a story that many of us are familiar with. This spring, I put Langston Hughes' Thank You, Ma'am, up on Genius and immediately sent a message to Stephen Pringle to ask him to open this page to individual student comments. I'm cutting through a lot of conversation and possibilities here, but I prefer my students to be working on publicly available pages on Genius, but I also want to give them the option of making individual comments, which, by the way, can include video comments or the more traditional Wikipedia-like community-edited comments. You can find the page I'm describing here by searching for Thank You Ma'am on Genius. Uh, you got to put that little apostrophe after the M-A. Uh, <laughs> Thank You Ma'am on Genius. Um, and you can also find it embedded on Youth Voices Mission, on a Youth Voices Mission at youthvoices.net slash thank you, all one word. As my students this spring were reading this story and adding their own annotations, the night after they started their work, another reader, a contributor and editor on the site, added the most insightful and helpful comments to the story. How delighted I was the next day to show the students that they could learn about the text from this writer and what a message it sent to them about the value of their own comments on this story. There are so many more examples, but let's allow Stephen Pringle to pick up this conversation. You know, this was the transcript of the of the GOP debate, which was, um, you know, we, we, we had a lot of fun with it, but there were also um, some serious political points to be made. And um, the Washington Post, uh, as part of their coverage, they transcribed everything. And I'm just scrolling down now. And um, so I can see the first annotation there is um, the Ronald Reagan Library. So um, I click on that, and it's because it's like a featured annotation. Um, it's visible by default. Uh, mm -hmm. If I want, if I want to kind of change that, I go up to this menu here where it says. So right now it says filter by featured annotations. Uh, I can I can click with drop down, and then I can see everyone who's annotated the page. Oh, wow. uh, so this is an example of a very crowded. And how page. many? And yeah, yeah. Okay, go as, ahead. Yeah. As you were as we were talking about, so I, if I want all annotations, um, it's going to get quite, you know, it's going to get quite yellow quite quickly. Um, it's still kind of manageable because it's a long document, but you can imagine if there's like a short poem or, or something like that, it would get over the top. But um, so yeah, I, right now I can see every annotation. Um, this this person is a community member. So is this person. Um, I can scroll through them all just just by just by scrolling. Uh, if I want to go back up, uh, and then yeah, like um, I can just click an individual account, and only their annotations will show. Right now, I haven't seen uh, you know a, a, an educational use of this of this filter, but um, like Greg was just saying, I think there's um, there's great potential in it. Oh no, my mind the buzz like that's that's a perfect tool. That's exactly what a, a, a teacher would need. Circling back to now comment, listen to these amazing ideas for using this tool in these teachers' classrooms. But I think, you know, I want to do, my next move is going to be a silent seminar um, mm. and just give them an article. The, the stuff that they really love is technology and how it's taking over their lives and affecting their, them emotionally. And a lot of them believe it, a lot of them do not at all, and it really divides the class. And um, I might just throw up that article. If you want to read it, it's called um, 2045, The Year Man Becomes Immortal. It's by Lev Grossman. It was published a couple years ago. But it basically says that man will become immortal by the year 2045, and the kids absolutely love it. Yeah. And uh, so I'll just have them read that and... I'll just get out of the way. I won't. I won't say a thing. I'll just put the document on there and say, you have to make. You have to ask a couple questions. You need to respond to something. Something very basic. And you know, I think that might help them get to what they want to talk about, rather than me forcing my brilliant questions upon them. <laughs> okay. 
And finally, coming back to hypothesis, allow Chris Sloan and me to point to Larry Hanley's American Literature English 528 course at San Francisco State University. Check out his site, teaching.lfhanley, H-A-N-L-E-Y, lfhanley.net slash ENG 528F15. Um, and I think we can all learn a lot about how hypothesis is working to challenges students to read in deeper, more collaborative, uh, more interesting ways. Thank you. Larry, um, do, you, do you make conscious connections back to the social annotations? And because, I mean, to me, it seems like your, your students are really prolific. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, so what I'll do is before class, I'll sit down and go through the, co the you know, the text and the annotations, and then kind of uh, group them. You know, like, well, the students really seem to be having trouble with this idea of double consciousness in Du Bois, or, you know, the students really seem to be grooving on uh, this uh, Frost idea of, you know, whatever, you know, this line from Frost, and some, and, or there'll be a lot of difficulty. You know, I'll go into class and say, hey, uh, Ariana, you said something about X. Can you explain that to us? You know what I mean? And then, you know, Ariana will explain it, and I'll say, and Jesse, you, you mentioned that. You know what I mean? So it's a great way to to seed the class. Larry, I, I teach 6th and 7th graders, and some of them are just struggling to learn to read, right? Um, and so as you were talking about provocation and, and so forth, I was thinking, yeah, but <laughs> I, 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 think, I think there's something useful about that too, you know. So I guess what I'm asking is that, in some sense, your students are still learning to read too, right? Um, I mean, can you? Yeah. What do you? I think you know, from my perspective, all students are still learning to read. To mm -hmm. be honest with you, I mean, it's and different. Teachers. It's different kinds of you know levels or something. But like I've taught graduate classes, and basically have felt in many of those graduate classes that I that the students still need to learn to read. Um, so, you know, and I think the one consistent thing about learning to read for me, or there are a couple of consistent things. One is pay attention to the words. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, you know, I said this earlier, but like not the deductive approach to a text, the inductive work from the words. Um, and I think the other thing, uh, about reading is that I try to practice is, you know, of course it's difficult. It, it wouldn't have any benefit <clears throat> if you were just reading your grocery list, you know what I mean, or your, you know, traffic ticket or something, you know, fine, but we're not, we're reading things that are difficult at times because that's where you really get engaged with the text. So I try to, you know, kind of, it's really hard, it's difficult, no matter what the level of student is, in my experience, but to really not be afraid of difficulty and confusion, and instead to see the difficult and confusing moments as very, very productive. I hope these examples have inspired you to join with us in understanding the power of annotating online. We are learning what it means to use tools that allow us and our students to engage both the author of an online text, image, video, or audio, and other readers, viewers, listeners of those texts at the same time and in the same space. If you can see what an important part of our work with young people it has been for many decades to invite them to respond to the voices in their heads, as well as the author's voice, and to generate a dialogue between these, imagine how exciting it is now to be inviting students into these new interactions of discourse that are available to a reader who is able to join or choose not to join prior readers' comments and replies, as well as to learn how to respond in ways that in turn invite possible future readers to engage with them. Not only that, readers can participate in these multi-dimensional dialogues multimodally. The tools that are turning annotations into conversations are also making it just as easy for a reader to respond with image, video, audio, and hyperlinks as it is to write comments. Grounded in the pedagogical history of annotation and dialectical note-taking and thrilled by these new tools, we invite you to join us in this ongoing inquiry into reading with others online using Hypothesis, Now Comment, and Lit Genius. Thanks for your time.